Hi everyone, this will be a video that will help you prepare for your CRT, most specifically the function question. Okay, so to get started, we need to be able to determine the difference between a linear function and an exponential function. So when we have our tables here and we can look at our y values, we want to see if we can find what's going on between one y value to the next. When we're looking at a linear function, it will all be added by the same value. So for instance, from 10 to 14, I add four. From 14 to 18, again, I'm adding four. And from 18 to 22, there we go, we have another four. So because all of these changes in our y's and our changes in our x's are going up by one, this would be represented by a linear function when you can add or subtract the same value to each y, and it's relatively the same, for us it's exactly the same, that'll be a linear function. On the other hand, we have what's called an exponential function. An exponential function isn't so easy as a linear. When you're looking at your y values of your exponential function, if we try to do the same method and say, okay, this is adding four, but then over here, we're adding eight. And then over here, we're adding 16. So you can really see that these are not the same. So right off the bat, I know that this is not going to be linear because these are not the same. So this is no good for us. What we can think about now instead, we can think about multiplying. Would we be able to multiply by a same value each and every time to get our next y value? And in this case, yes. If we take our 4 and multiply it by 2, we get 8. If we take our 8 and multiply it by 2, we get our 16. So, so far we're looking good. 16 times 2, 32. And you can see again, we're going up by 1s nice and evenly. So this makes absolute sense that this is not going to be linear because we're not adding, now we're multiplying. This will be an exponential. So an exponential function multiply by the same value to get y values and a linear function we're going to add the same value to get y values. So we have an example. This example, the first part of our example, is just saying, what would be best here? Would this be better modeled with a linear or an exponential function? So we have two different criteria here. We have a table and we have a graph. We can look at the graph and we can assume that maybe we can get a best fit line here. Again, this is real data that we're dealing with now. It's not going to be precise. You could estimate this, and I could estimate this. It looks like a line might model this data effectively. So that's one way to view your graph. Or we can use the same method that we used on the last slide, which is seeing if our y's are changing by relatively the same number. So when we go from 97 to 127, <clears throat> what you could do is you can either subtract or you can just see, okay, 97 plus what will give me 127. So I'm going to show you the subtraction method. So not 127 minus 97 is going to equal 30. Let's try this again. So we, now we have 162 minus 127. We have 35. And then one last time, we have 188 minus 162. And we get 26. These are all relatively the same number. So because they are close, this would be a linear function, okay? So it is linear because our y values are changing by adding almost the same value, somewhere around 30, each and every time. Our second part to the same question is now a different table, a different graph, but same question here. What would be better, exponential or linear? Looking at my graph here, it might be a little bit more difficult to see, but on my graph, it's not so linear because you can see our changes are not the same each and every time. Our graph looks like it would more fit an exponential curve. So let's look at the table, get some real data here for us. 
So when we're looking at our table, again, we want to say, can we add by the same number each time? Or can we multiply by a same number each time? So if we wanted to check our addition, right? So if we wanted to check our addition here, right here, we can figure out that, okay, this would be adding 15.2. And to get from one, or sorry, 19.2 to 97.9, it'll be 78.7. .7. Clearly, they are not even near the same number. And then our last row here, we have a difference of plus 369.2. So these are all vastly different. This tells me this is not linear. So let's check to see if exponential would be a good fit. So for exponential, we need to see if we're going to be multiplying by the same number each time or relatively the same number each time. To do that, you can use division, right? Division is the opposite of multiplication. So if I take my values here, I'm going to erase what we have because we know that this isn't going to work. So what we can do here is we can take our values. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 467.1, and I'm going to divide it by 97.9. And what this is going to do, it's going to tell me what value we multiplied 97.9 by to get our next y value. So when I divide this, I get 4 point, we'll just round it to 4.77. Next, I could do my next set of numbers, and I'm kind of working backwards this time, right? I'm starting with my largest value, and I'm dividing backwards. So now I'm going to go one more time. So I have 97.9 divided by 19.2. When I do that in my calculator, I get about 5.09. Now again, we can do our last one. We'll do 19.2 divided by 4. And when I get that, I plug that in my calculator, and I get 4.8. So we could use a little bit of reasoning here, right? Our values, I'm just going to box them out so we can really focus on them. Our values are 4.8, 5.09, and 4.77. These are all pretty close to 5. Because this is not, you know, a, a regular function, this is real data that maybe somebody has collected in a study, this data really shows that exponential model will fit. So an exponential model will fit because we have almost what's called a common ratio. We have a same value that we're multiplying by each time. So here we go on a second question that is now asking us to explain. When we're asked to explain, we want to explain in words and in mathematical terms using numbers and expressions. We want to explain how we know this without using a graph. So for us, we know that if something is linear, that means we're adding consistently each time. If something's exponential, we're multiplying. So one thing that we can show to explain our work, we can show that, okay, to get from 97 to 127, we added 30. And to get from 127 to 162, we added 35. And to get from 162 to 188, we added 26. We know that this is all relatively close to 30, meaning that linear would be a great option. So let's see an explanation of this written out. I do suggest that when you see the explanations and, and all these examples that you do write them down, that way you have your notes somewhere and you have something to reference when you are studying. So here's our part A explanation. When we are trying to determine whether a function is linear or not, we subtract each y value from the one following it. If the difference between the y values is approximately the same, then a linear function is a good fit. And for us, for part A, a linear function was a great fit for us. Let's switch gears now and let's talk about part B. When we're looking at part B, again, they're asking us if it was linear or exponential. On the last slide, we did determine that it was exponential. But how did we determine that? We determined that to get from 4 to 19.2, we would have to multiply, and we would multiply by 4.8. And to get from 19.2 to 97.9, we multiplied again, and that was 5.09. And to get to our last y value, we multiplied again, and that was 4.77. So you can see the difference now is that we're not adding, we are multiplying each and every time. So let's have an explanation of that. Again, take a minute, make sure you copy this down so that you do have it available to you when you're studying. And our explanation for part B is as follows. So a linear function will not work. The difference in the y values are extremely different. We can't just add a number each and every time. 
So to find out if an exponential is a good fit, you need to divide each y value by the one preceding it, the one before it. If the answers are close to being the same, how ours were approximately around five, then an exponential function will work for us. So lastly, we have our third question here, and this is where we get to be a little bit creative. We get to create our own linear and our own exponential function. So here's a little tip for you. Pick your favorite number, okay? So I'm going to pick three as my favorite number. So that means for my linear, I'm just gonna make a note to myself. For my linear, I'm going to add the same number each time. And for my exponential, I'm going to multiply by the same number each time. Okay, so the two things you need to determine are the number where you're going to start and the number that you're going to either add or multiply by. So for me, I'm going to pick that I'm going to start, we'll start at two. I'm going to start here at 2. So let's just say my favorite number is 8. I'm going to add 8 each time. Okay, so if I'm going to add 8, you can do your little notation. I'm going to do, oops, <laughs> thinking ahead there. So plus 8, so we're going to have 10. You can add 8 again, get 18. You can add 8 again and get 26. So that's a fantastic linear function. You just have to choose where you start and choose the number you're going to add each time. For exponential, it's almost the same. You're gonna choose a value that you start at and choose a number that you're going to multiply by. So I'm gonna choose just a smaller number so we don't have to go crazy here. So <clears throat> for exponential, I'll write it below. I'm going to multiply, we'll do three, three each time. So again, the two things you pick, you're going to pick your starting value, so we'll start at two again. And then I'm gonna multiply by three, so I'm gonna do times three, and I get six. I'm gonna do times three, and get 18. And I'm gonna do times three, and get 54. So there I have an exponential function where I chose the number I started and the number I multiplied by. So we'll write that out in one final note before we go. So note, choose starting value, and value to add each time, that's for linear, or multiply each time, and that's for exponential.